Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Hello, and this is Johnny Escott for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm with Lewis Horn, the undefeated professional... Lewis, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm brilliant, mate. How are you? Good to hear, mate. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm always good. Thanks. Um, so yeah, let, let's go back to where it first started back in uh, 2012. It was your first competition, wasn't it? As a as an amateur, and you came out on top. Yeah, yeah. So um, it started with because my brother boxes at Harvey, so I thought I'd get in the gym. I was playing for Arsenal at the time as well, so I thought I'd get in the gym. Really enjoyed it. I went on my first bout, panicking, mate, on that first bout, proper panicking. But, yeah, come out and done well. So I thought, but it's the winning. The win, winning compared to the football so much better than, so much better than football. You know what I mean? The, the yeah. winning on the boxing is, the highs are so high, mate. That's what's so good about it. But, yeah. Was that what made you go with boxing over football, that that winning feeling? Um, yeah, it, it was and it weren't. I got injured... Um, I got injured at, um, on the tail end of the football career, so I thought I'd jump back into the jump back into the boxing. I give it give the boxing one more crack, give it a go. Winning winning the Harringay, won that, and then um, I thought forget staying amateur because same thing. What my brother did, he he went GB route, but no Olympics was guaranteed, no nothing. In, even though he was on there for a long time, so. I see the error he made, so I thought I might as well turn over as quick as, and I'm suited to the pro game as well, really. Yeah, you you yeah. obviously mentioned Harvey there, who he was a very successful amateur, and he's he's doing well as a pro as well. How much influence has that has Harvey had on your career so far? Is he a big part? Yeah, he's a big part. Yeah, he's a really big part. But um, there's a lot of things where um he's been through already, so he can tell me a few things and um. I don't even have to go through it myself, you know what I mean? It's just it's keeping me on track, perfect. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, you you mentioned it briefly before. You won the Harringay Cup back in back in 2019. Obviously, it's very yeah. prestigious. It's a very prestigious tournament. Just, just talk us through that experience. Um, what happened? I'll tell you a funny one, but um I, I was boxing for Limas at the time. Um in um I think it is, yeah, sound like that. And um, so I've gone back in the gym. I've had a few fights and I start messing around a bit in the gym. I'm like stupid, but that mess around, the coach kicked me out. He's like, can't have done this. So then I've come back to him, like, it's a week before the Harringay, right? It's a week before. I was like, please, just let me box in it. It's what I've been waiting for the whole time. And uh, um, he goes, right, then we're going to go in it. And then a few days later, he's like, I can't put you in it, not fit enough. I was like, mate, just put me in it. Please just put me in it. So anyways, he goes and puts me in it. And um, I had a proper meeting that all the old man come down that um, had a proper meeting, meeting about it. And he was half fuming. And he'd been training and all this, but I said, just put me in it. Anyways, he goes, um, we go to Aaron Gay. And um, I get there. I make the weight. That was it. The struggle was the weight. That was a biggie. So I Proper struggle with the weight. I'm thinking oh, I drew a French boy in the first bit. So, um, nah, I'm panicking. I'm thinking, what have I done? What have I done? I'm thinking, no. <laughs> so, I've had a week's training, right? Guy in there, absolute box, unbelievable. Box, I, I don't know what happened. You know what I mean, I think it's just pure fear. Well, I got so good. I, I was running the whole time, but yeah, it was wicked. And, um, and then in the semi, the box, someone then I'd, um, scarce boy in the finals. And um, I watched him the day before me because it, it was who I was going to have, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I watched him and he was red. I got home, I had a, didn't sleep the whole night. I woke up aching so I ain't even been training properly. I uh, went in there, yeah, done business on him, really. Yeah, done really well. But yeah, after that, I thought, because um, the things were coming up, the ABAs, and then um, my Limehouse coaches was trying to, get me to stay on for the ABAs, but I was set ready, mate. I was set ready to just go pro and um, just seeing what's happening with Arva, I just thought it's best for me to go pro. 
So I didn't say anything until everything was signed and sealed. And then by then, um, it all got sorted. I went in there, they was probably fuming at me. They didn't talk to me for half a year. And then Corona hit as my luck, you know what I mean? Then Corona hit. And then um, I've had to wait. I was just at the wait for ages. But now, now's the time, really. Yeah. You've been a pro for, what is it now, two years nearly? Yeah, two years, two years. Is there anyone you've, obviously, you had a, well, you should mention it, you had a big win over a certain Adam Azim in the amateur ranks. Is that yeah. something you're looking at in the professional ranks already? I don't know, mate. He's red out at the minute, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm up for anyone, to be honest with you. I'm up, I'm just to need to get my name out there. Even this fight that's been coming up, it's, um, we've been, we've been pushing a lot of names about, but it's, I understand why people don't want to take it. It's a big risk for it's a big risk for them to lose lose their role for a not not a nothing fight. But I don't understand it because I think we're all going to get in fifty fifties later on. You're going to get it sooner or later. I don't know why people are getting these padded records, and um, but it's messing me up as well because I'm trying to find trying trying to get ready for fights and that. But when the journeyman, it's hard to get the get um. Get a fire in your belly, if you know what I mean. But um, yeah. So I hope uh, if Rod, Rod, my coach at the minute, he's um he's guiding me brilliant, but he's pushing me as much as I want to be pushed. So um, he's looking at after this one, hopefully southern area, or if anything else comes up with a promotion, I'll be all over it, mate. I'll be all over it. Yeah, I think it is yeah. it. My McDonald's got the southern area at lightweight at the moment, is it? Yeah, it's got a lightweight, but um, they're trying to get me a super feather on the day before. I'm like, right, crack it, mate. I mean, you have to do some trimming for that, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I will. But, um, um, heavy, though, that su- super feather, you know. Oh, it's yeah. heavy. You'd be massive for super feather, would you? God, I'll be doing everyone super feather. <laughs> So it was your last fight where you uh, picked up your first knockout. It was obviously at York Hall uh, where, where you bought. Yeah, I think it was about three months ago, I think it was. And um, that was meant to be half um, 50-50. But uh, I got in there. But you know what the good thing is as well? When you're fighting someone that knows the journeymen are... Uh, people don't get journeymen are brilliant. They know how to survive. They're they're unbelievable. But um, when you get in there with someone who wants to win, you can see the shots that are coming at you. So I find it easier to fight someone that, that wants to come and win. See what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. But, yeah. That that knockout showed a beautiful, beautiful backhand off the ropes. What what was that mate. feeling like? Obviously, York Hall was busy. Oh, it mate, was... it was my... I, d- I didn't go to sleep, right? So I'm... what time did I get to sleep? I think I got that. Eight o'clock, I didn't go out, nothing. I got, got indoors, like, sat down, and it started hitting me, like, what I've just done. But first of all, yeah, when I jumped on the ropes, right, I'm thinking, mate, I feel like my drugs right now, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm banging the chest and that. I'm thinking, this is crazy. And then I get sat, and then my my level just went crazy. Like, I could not, I could not wrap me around what's just happening, you know what I mean? But, um... Because he keeps telling me, Rod, as well, he keeps saying, look, you're going to knock it, you're going to knock every fight in that. But you know when you believe it, but you don't believe it, like, you're it's one of them ones. And um, so as soon as it happened, he, he was all chilled about it. I was thinking, mate, yeah, it was wicked, though. It was unreal. But yeah, many more's come, man, 100%. Yeah, so currently at the moment, um, you've not got a big promoter backing you. So if Eddie Hearn, if Ben Shalom, if Frank Warren's watching this, what would you say to them? They, I would say, listen, taking a chance on me it ain't really taking a chance. It's a win-win. It's you're gonna be. You don't even have to pump that much money into me. You know, just put me on one of your shows and try me out. That's all. That's all you need to do. If you like what you see, which you will, <clears throat> and then it's time. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, I don't see it as a big risk to them. At all, not at all, because I believe in what I can do. You know what I mean? I'm fully confident. Exactly. Yeah. You've obviously got you've got Sam Gilly in the gym. He was absolutely flying, at, um, oh, super well away, isn't he? How much of a help has he been, mate? He 
I, I was with a trainer before, and um, it's to get the pro style is very hard. It's um, like amateur coaches, pro coaches, they're they're all different in their own own way. So Rod and Sam, Sam's been there, done it. You know what I mean, there's all these little tricks he's given me, and it's mate. I was just proper grateful, grateful for it because um, I'm progressing really quick. And compared to my other coach, I've been pro progressing three times as more. You know what I mean? I'm comfortable being in the ring now. Oh yeah, yeah. They they've just done a world good to me. Perfect, mate. Really. But yeah, he's killing it right now, isn't he, mate? Brian Sam, he's uh, um, making a lot of noise. Yeah, big time. See the body shot on the weekend. Oh, I felt it, mate. I was. I was like, oh. It was it the was noise. Bad. It was the noise. Yeah. It was the yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know what? I thought, oh, what was going on here? But it sounded like it cracked the rib. That's when I, I panicked. I went, boom. Yeah. The whole thing is quiet for a minute. Oh, it was mad. Yeah. It, it was a shot that. Uh, it was a shot that Sam won't forget in a while. And I think everyone who is going to be fighting in the future, they'll be they'll be watching that with a. Okay, I'll do it like this. <laughs> yeah, know it. You know it. Anyway, yeah. Lewis, it was great to chat to you. Um, I wish you all the best for the future. Hopefully, a big promoter sees this and and realizes your talent and and gets you on a show. And I'm sure once you get that opportunity, then off you go. You'll, yeah. you'll you'll have a very very good, very successful professional career, and no doubt about that. Yeah. Rod as well. Rod's a brilliant trainer, brilliant person. You've got a good team around you, so. Yeah, ho hopefully, over you, which I'm sure you will. You will get that opportunity, and when you do, I'm sure you'll take it. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, brilliant. thank you, man. Nice one for that, Lou. Cheers, mate. Have a good one. And you, mate, and you. Join us for the very first CFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coop and Cassius, and some very special guests Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So, in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking shell up. <laughs>